Welcome everyone to today's episode. I wanted to show you another marvel of Sony miniaturization. This Sony Walkman MZ RH1 mini disc player. And this is actually probably the very last portable mini disc player Sony produced in maybe it was like 2006. And I even got this new on the release day, pre ordered on Amazon back in the day. And this is using this higher capacity 1 gigabyte mini discs. This regular ones hold 74 minutes of properly compressed MP3 like music. And this high MDs hold 1 gigabyte. As you probably can see, these displays here are quite faded. As this is organic LED, one could even say rotted. While you can still see the left side somewhat, the right side is pretty dark. And even without camera, here in daylight you can barely read what is written there. And this is unfortunately a common problem of this. And also the funny thing is because new it was around 300 euro or dollars or so. And in the meantime they sell for 6 if not 800 on eBay. And um, this is of course nice to not having to spend this overpriced amount for a slightly faded OLED display. Here is this cable remote. The disc is ejected here and loaded here. And while I always thought this is a little bit fragile loading mechanism, it so far it worked. Otherwise it has a display menu button, volume controls, cancel, pause, T-mark for track markings. Here is play and forward, reverse, also rack level apparently, and a recessed record button. And a hold button here on the underside. The lithium ion battery goes here in this side door that obviously by now is Obviously by now it does not have the highest capacity anymore. Even those are expensive to get on eBay or such. Maybe like 80 dollar or euro. And then you can't even be sure how much charge they will hold, how new they are. For connection you have a 3.5 mm headphone jack with Sony additional cable remote pins. And a mic in with plug-in power as well as line in and optical in that you can use with an SPDIF optical mini jack and the remote replicates most of the pins as well which is of course also helpful as this old-fashioned display should be readable in any case. So to repair this actually in contrast to Apple you can get service manuals from Sony including the part numbers so it was possible to order this OLED display but obviously it was highly expensive. I found that another small and compact Sony device. So this is a Sony Digital Music Player NW-S205F and a small and compact MP3 flash player that is also quite nice as this. So I got this from eBay as defect spare parts only for only 7 euro or so plus shipping, so usually 11 or so. And this looks actually still quite nice and neat. And as it is also a nice player, so I never had this, I never used this headphone plugs here. And this is meant for jogging and such, so you got it with this arm thing and could have it then on your arm while jogging. Actually, maybe quite a nice idea and in my opinion this looks even nicer than an iPod Shuffle. If you ask me, also actually more usable than an iPod Shuffle with a display and navigation controls and such. This player does not turn on right now, the battery is totally dead. I will power it on with a USB cable in a second, but it will not play in this mode, it will only charge, so can't test it more than this. But I would guess it otherwise fully works. And this display appears to be much brighter than this white one, so I will try to disassemble this one, get the OLED display out of this one, hopefully uh, without destroying anything. It would of course be a pity if disassembling this, of course I need to disassemble here quite a bit to get to the display. It would of course be a pity if this display swap ruins 
either this player or this neat little thing. If I can get this faded display out of this, maybe I just for the sake of collection put it back in this one. If it otherwise fully works, maybe get a replacement battery and hope that it works then again. So stay tuned for some disassembly and OLED display swap. As you can see with this USB cable it indeed powers up and you immediately see how much brighter this display is. Actually the brightest of all the three displays by a huge margin. So this would actually be indeed nice to have this bright display here. This, this front panel here apparently has two of those displays, one on the left and one on the right side. So this is why this fits in there. I find it also really interesting that Sony really reused this display from such a different unit. It's still a portable music device, but the form factor obviously is such a difference that it's really, that it's really a bit surprising that they really reuse the same part in this units. Really interesting. So and also as soon as this cable is out here this unit is doing nothing so can't play anything as it's in this USB storage and charging mode otherwise. Yeah right now it's useless anyway with, at least with a new battery. On this player the first screw is here. I just realized service manually is only so helpful as they include clear instructions. Um, so while we have here some disassembly procedure, so it starts with like what should set mean, the set means start or and then they have here HP cap inner window USB holder, I think this is headphone cap I guess. So but they don't write here anything. So nothing like do this, do that. Somehow I don't see anything that can be removed here. So Here's some adhesive sheet, so I guess this is glued. And only later, so here it continues. Okay, here many pieces exploded with. Also wonder if we really should miniaturize everything so far that we can't repair it anymore. Everything is glued. But um, so here is the panel. And here you see the OLED display that we are organic EL indicator module that we want to get to and here's also the battery so you need to do all of this even if you only want to get to the battery. So repairability score one I would say. And here's the USB holder. They, it looks like they want to do this later also. Maybe here's some case plate removal thing. But as I couldn't get any way near there I started with this USB holder. I could get this out after unscrewing the screw. I used here this plastic flex to pry this out here. This was really hard, took 10 minutes or more, eventually it worked. The next problem is, so this display, the whole display window thing here is glued, as you can see here, adhesive sheet window and also cannot be reused, please replace the brand new part once adhesive sheet window is removed. So I start to wonder, so not only this repair will be not the most easy, I also wonder if we even get it back together again. And so next I need to pry this window thing off here. So a little bit hot air gun on the balcony always helps. And then always try to use plastic and such. Avoids excessive damaging of everything by metal tools. Sometimes fingernails are also nice prying tools. So much to reusing this adhesive. There is our OLED display. I'm actually surprised that it's so silver. I saw it. So the filter thing makes it darker. That is interesting. I totally not have expected this display to be so shiny. Some screws that we always like much more than glue. So then this whole aluminum shell can be pulled back. And there in the middle of the sandwich you can see the battery. So in case you just want to service a battery on one of those, that is where you need to get to. And as you can see, miniaturization is totally awesome. I really wonder if we do ourselves and our society and environment a favor building things like that. Ending up with such unrepairable, adhesive glue stuff. So, hmm. 
Well, at least until now it still works though. Slightly wonder though if we will get this display out of there in a working condition. Hmm, what project have I chosen for today? So actually this looked like one piece, but actually this is this is adhesive here, two stripes on the left and right. The other one should be here. Oh, I touched the display so. So definitely not for unexperienced disassemblers. There we have the display off actually already. Actually with my bare eyes at least I can see here the fan out of the display pixels. It's of course not the most high resolution display. Below the display we find the two next screws holding this USB connector and the PCB together. So then everyone comes loose here. Maybe also in case you want to swap the battery there. And does it still work? I think everything should still be connected. Let's give it a last test. Oh, it still works even. Didn't touch too much. I really wonder given this fragile stuff I think it will be the same inside the player here so I'm slightly unsure if I want to go forward ruining my otherwise perfectly fine player. Yes, slightly regret starting this already. And of course the battery is glued in place here. Because why not? So given the bubbled look of the battery, I guess this one guessed off or what it's called. So yeah, and as you can see, over 10 years old, manufacturing date 2006, 11, 24. So yeah, actually quite the same time frame as the mini disc player. And here's a battery connector thing. I think I cut the cable off and apply some power and see if it still plays music running from a lab power supply. Actually here they wasted quite some space. If you look on this here's some PCB kind of thing where the battery terminals are soldered and the connection wire was soldered here. So they wasted actually some, how much is it? Maybe 5% or so. So given all the miniaturization, actually this I would not have minded if they installed it slightly bigger battery though. Yep, and that indeed works. Let me power cycle and as you can see hopefully so. So the only problem it had was indeed the battery, otherwise it probably a fully fine working unit, including the better working OLED display. So now comes the fun part of doing the same relaxing procedure on the mini displayer. Hmm. <laughs> So this are this direct flex cable flip up connector things also here on the side that I just for a test took out here on actually it's even two rows here just realized usually I've seen them with one row yeah two rows here as well if that is, maybe I should just manually focus a little bit yeah they're visible two lines and that's the OLED display. I hope it still works. <laughs> 